In this video, we'll be having a look at Ultramarine Linux. Ultramarine is a super polished Linux distribution based on Fedora. Ultramarine aims to be a more user-friendly version of Fedora. It wants to be what Ubuntu is for Debian. That's the focus. I installed Ultramarine after it being repeatedly recommended by you guys in the comments and I must say, I thoroughly enjoyed using it. In fact, for my workflows, Ultramarine was super smooth. Ultramarine provides a fantastic platform for video editing, gaming and software development. It's a very polished desktop computing platform for general use as well. So let's jump right in and have a look at the user interface choices it provides, the performance, stability, software availability and see what makes this special Linux distro better than Fedora. And interestingly, see why you will most probably still use Fedora. Having a good knowledge of Linux commands and being comfortable using the terminal really broadens what you can do with Linux and what kind of experience you are going to get here. So if you are interested in leveling up your Linux game, definitely check out my course Linux Mastery Express, which is the fastest way to learn Linux and start using Linux like a pro. I'll teach you a set of commands that will give you the confidence to use Linux without even a graphical user interface. Then we'll dive deep and learn how to use the V editor and master shell scripting with real life examples. After teaching more than 100 students in person, I've curated this course with the top things that will level up your Linux skills the fastest. So if you're feeling like your Linux game is stuck in the same spot for too long and you're ready to take your Linux skills to the next level quickly, check out the link in the description below and get your Linux Mastery Express. We are running a massive 45% discount right now, so make use of it. Ultramarine Linux offers 4 desktop environment options, but its flagship version comes with the Budgie desktop. Now Fedora has an official Budgie spin, but Ultramarine had chosen Budgie as its main desktop even before Fedora provided Budgie. Ultramarine's Budgie desktop is customized slightly. Ultramarine 39 is specifically quite different from the last version. Earlier, we had a custom menu icon here which looked dangerously close to the Windows logo. This time, we are getting a different icon. This brings up the standard Budgie menu. I really enjoy using this menu. There's an element of simplicity to it. All apps organized into categories and a quick search. While I'm mostly open apps using the search, this menu also lets you see what's available here. I also like the very subtle opening animation that this menu has. Then we get the workspace switcher here. You can scroll on this to navigate between workspaces. That way you can organize all your running apps into workspaces based on your work. You don't want to mix work and play. But the funny thing is, you need to scroll up to move to the next workspace. The scrolling mechanism here is upside down and you can't change it. We get the favorites and running applications on the center of this panel, Windows 11 style. This looks very good on the screen, but I'm very preferential towards having them on the left side of the screen. You can change that by opening Budgie desktop settings and in the panel section, select the icon task list and move it up. You can also customize other panel elements here. But yeah, Ultramarine developers have tried to create their own unique budgie look here and it makes the desktop look and feel very premium. Then we have our standard quick controls here like the volume, networks and budgie desktop side panel called Raven. There's a calendar and a few other widgets here and you'll find your notifications in this tab. This side panel has so much potential. If only more app developers utilized this and created more widgets. Talking about the theming, we get the dark theme by default here and it makes all the applications look so good to the eye. Everything looks gorgeous. If you want, you can turn the dark theme off by heading over to the budget desktop settings. Hydrogen icon pack is used by default here and they bring in very unique high quality icons. The ones pinned to the bottom panel look very good. By the way, you need to drag applications from the menu and drop them here to pin them to the panel. The default wallpaper here adds a touch of that modern art. The cursor though is going to be hit or miss for some people as people expect the cursor to look a certain way. If you like using this bubble, go ahead. If it doesn't ring your bells, you can change it from Budgie Desktop settings. All in all, Budgie Desktop is a very refined product. Ultramarine polishes it up with its own vision and makes the whole thing a little bit better. Looks good, works great. Then we also get GNOME Edition here. This edition gives you standard stock GNOME, it's stock GNOME except for the wallpaper. But we do get tiling support out of the box here. This is taken from Pop OS, I believe. This we don't get in Fedora by default. When you have multiple windows open, you can just toggle this to tile them perfectly on the screen and you can adjust the tiles as you want. This tiling feature here also comes with extensive options that provide a high degree of flexibility. This is a great feature to have. Tiling significantly boosts up the productivity when we are talking about multi-window workflows. Things like software development, research and writing, it all becomes very easy. 
Tiling provides an element of clarity, so it's fantastic that Ultramarine developers have added it here. Then we get the Pantheon edition here. Pantheon is the smash hit desktop created by Elementary OS. Elementary OS is on a journey of self-discovery right now and I don't find it recommendable. But Pantheon is a genuinely enjoyable desktop. It's super gorgeous to look at and at the same time, it's so simple to use. Ultramarine provides us with the latest and greatest version of this phenomenal desktop built directly from its GitHub repo. Using this system made me feel that we should have more distros offering Pantheon desktop. It has its own workflow, but once you get a hang of it, using Pantheon is a fantastic experience. And we are getting it here on top of Fedora. And Fedora doesn't officially offer a Pantheon spin, so this is just great to have. Then we have Ultramarine KDE Plasma. With Ultramarine 39, there have been big changes in this version. Until the last version, Ultramarine provided a customized version of KDE Plasma that was heavily inspired by Pop OS. But this time, it looks like we are back to stock Plasma. Honestly, this is a great change as Plasma provides one of the best desktop experiences you can have today. I strongly feel that Plasma is the best in its purest form. This is a fantastic experience. Ultramarine Linux provides a good set of desktop environments, so even if you don't like a particular desktop, you can just go with something that's more to your liking. Yeah, most of these except for Pantheon desktop are officially available as Fedora spins. So you might ask, what's Ultramarine offering that Fedora doesn't? I mean, why should we pick Ultramarine over Fedora? To answer that, I'm gonna take you deeper with Ultramarine. See what I did here? Ultramarine kinda means the ocean or the sea and I'm gonna take you deeper. Yeah, never mind. Ultramarine is based on Fedora, so you can install software from Fedora software repositories here. Now Fedora is a popular Linux distro and has an extensive set of software available. Pretty much anything you want here will be available here in the software store. But Fedora is strictly open source only entity. All the components of Fedora are fully open source and Fedora repositories contain only open source software. Closed source proprietary software is not provided officially. Now I can fully get behind this. I appreciate the availability of such a system. It's a system that you can truly trust. But at times, using open source software only can be cumbersome. We can say it can lead to a limited computing experience. Things like Nvidia proprietary drivers and Steam for gaming are needed even when they are not open source. To get these on Fedora, we can use the RPM Fusion repositories. RPM Fusion repositories contain a large number of software that are not available from Fedora repositories officially. Ultramarine Linux comes with these repositories enabled out of the box, so you get access to vastly more software here. But recently, Fedora has made enabling RPM Fusion repositories very easy. Now they provide a direct toggle in the software store, so this kinda nullifies Ultramarine's advantage over Fedora. Now take a note of this thing because we are going to see a pattern here. Ultramarine also brings its own package repositories called Terra. Terra has a large pool of software that are not available for direct installation on Fedora based systems. I tried using a few packages from here and I had mixed reactions. Finally, there's full Flatpak support here with Flathub access. You can directly install any Flatpak you want directly from the software store here. There's a convenient switcher that lets you switch between full native packages and Flatpak. With Flatpak, we come full circle and you can install any application you want here. Yeah, Ultramarine tries to be just simpler in the software department by providing RPM Fusion repositories out of the box. But Fedora 2 lets you enable them by just toggling a switch from software store preferences. You don't need to go to RPM Fusion website and get installation commands from there and install them manually. While Fedora's advancements don't take anything away from Ultramarine, I mean it's still a simpler option. I'm just letting you know that Fedora has simplified these things now. But if we are not comparing, just looking at Ultramarine, then it provides a massive software library. Fedora repositories plus RPM Fusion plus Flatpaks. Anything you want, you'll get here. Ultramarine closely follows the Fedora release cycle. In fact, in this department, Ultramarine is basically Fedora. It rolls out a new version every 6 months. This is extremely convenient for many people. This release cycle provides new packages loaded with the newest technology and at the same time, the updates are not so frequent that you have to update so often that it reminds you of Windows. Really, I find this semi-annual release cycle to be very sweet. It gives the developers ample amount of time to test out new packages and make sure everything works harmoniously. At the same time, you are not left out to use half a decade old packages like on Debian. Ultramarine system itself is very stable and well tested. Everything works great here and it can be trusted for use by students, software professionals and pretty much anywhere else imaginable. Talking about the usability, this is where Ultramarine shines. 
I mean, that's the whole point of Ultramarine, making Fedora more accessible and usable. Firstly, Ultramarine comes as a full-fledged workstation out of the box. There's the Firefox browser, LibreOffice suite for all your document needs, and all the essential utilities. On top of this, Ultramarine also comes with all the multimedia codecs installed and enabled out of the box. Now Fedora doesn't come with codecs for most video and music playback by default. This is because of copyright restrictions. This is true for many Linux distros, but getting them on Fedora has been made very easy now. There was a time when I used to get a headache when I wanted to watch any videos on a fresh install of Fedora, but now the codecs are automatically installed with your permission. On Ultramarine, this is not a problem at all. In everything, usability gets special attention on Ultramarine and this is an absolutely effortless system to use. Top points. I used Ultramarine for a bit and I found it to be a very balanced and stable performer. Ultramarine is Fedora under the hood and every version of Fedora comes very optimized in terms of performance. I found every new version of Fedora to be even better than the last one. Ultramarine comes with BTRFS and has Z standard compression enabled out of the box. With this, your file read and write speeds are significantly boosted. App launching speeds are ingeniously improved and you can feel it yourself. Compared to other systems, Fedora 36 plus systems are faster to boot up and even day-to-day -day usage feels fluid. Ultramarine benefits from this. Fedora also comes with new versions of all the packages. These newer packages also tend to be more optimized. We are also getting the latest Linux 6.5 here. This kernel brings improved read and write speeds on Linux file systems like ext4 and btrfs. So overall, Ultramarine is going to be a fantastic system as far as performance is concerned. It'll give you the best possible performance across a range of hardware. Gaming on Linux is not a niche thing anymore. It's phenomenal now actually. Ultramarine, in fact pretty much any Linux distribution can be used to enjoy a fully loaded gaming experience now. Ultramarine Linux has a large pool of fully free Linux games that you can download from the software store here. I particularly have put hundreds of hours into Zero AD and Super Tux Kart. Super Tux Kart is a multiplayer essential if you and the boys are hanging out. Tell everybody to bring their own game pads and this game is gonna rock. But the real deal starts once you install Steam. Steam has thousands of Linux native games like the Tomb Raider series, Dota 2, Counter Strike, The Hitman and a lot more. And with Steam's Proton feature, you can play thousands of Windows games like they are Linux native here. Top AAA titles like GTA 5, The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, Cyberpunk 2077 and a lot more install and run like they are Linux native. You'll be surprised at how well the whole thing runs. Enable Steam Play and you'll be golden. And if you have your own Windows game files or disks, install bottles from the software store and it'll make your life simply easier. Overall, gaming on Ultramarine is top grade. Ultramarine offers a straightforward installation procedure. First, head over to the official website and download the ISO file with the particular desktop that you want to use. Then flash it onto a USB stick and live boot into it. Here you get Anaconda installer which is simple. You select the language you want, then select your location, select the partition that you want to install Ultramarine on and then create a user. Once this is done, you can go ahead with the installation and Anaconda will do the rest for you. Once installation is done, reboot into your new Ultramarine installation. The new installation has very good default settings and it comes loaded with a good set of applications as well. So you can jump right in with Ultramarine. Multimedia codecs are pre-installed. Additional repositories like RPM Fusion, Terra, Flathub are pre-configured so you can start downloading additional applications. GPU drivers for AMD and Intel integrated are also pre-installed. If you have Nvidia hardware, you need to manually install proprietary drivers for maximum performance. But I tell you. Installing NVIDIA proprietary drivers is super simple on Ultramarine. Fedora has had a love-hate relationship with NVIDIA drivers and installing them could be a big headache on Fedora even just a couple years ago. Now steps have been taken to simplify that process and it's okay now. But Ultramarine from a long time ago has been providing a very simple one command option to install NVIDIA drivers. Another advantage that is being nullified by Fedora's improvements in this area. Overall, getting started with Ultramarine is very simple. Ultramarine is bug to bug compatible with Fedora. That means it's pretty much exactly the same system as Fedora. Now this brings about a huge benefit. Fedora has extensive community written guides, how to articles and troubleshooting help online. This makes it very easy to use Fedora. And Ultramarine being Fedora under the hood means all these help guides are fully applicable to Ultramarine as well. So if you get stuck anywhere or you need help doing something on Ultramarine, you can google how to solve it on Fedora and apply the same steps on Ultramarine and you'll be good to go. 
Ultramarine Linux has a relatively small community, so you might not always find help material written for Ultramarine specifically. But that's not an issue at all as you can apply Fedora's help material to Ultramarine as well. Ultramarine is an excellent operating system. You can feel a high degree of refinement everywhere. I mean that's Ultramarine's thing, refining the Fedora experience. To sum things up here, on top of the standard Fedora experience, Ultramarine offers more stuff out of the box. Things like RPM Fusion repositories, multimedia codecs, a couple of added desktop options. These are all provided by default. On Fedora, you'll have to manually install RPM Fusion repositories and multimedia codecs. While Ultramarine does make things simpler, latest advancements by Fedora in improving the ease of doing things does take away the edge from Ultramarine. A couple years ago, Ultramarine would have been a considerable upgrade over Fedora, but today, not so much. But as an operating system by itself, Ultramarine is definitely a very premium and refined system and is a great experience to use every day. This is a phenomenal system to use. Since Fedora is catching up on Ultramarine, I think it's time Ultramarine developers take a big picture view at this distro and decide on what its identity going to be moving forward. Make it a gaming oriented distro maybe, or provide pre-configured and optimized ISOs for different things like media editing or development work. But yeah, Fedora is definitely catching up on Ultramarine and it's time for Ultramarine to evolve soon to survive. Alright, that's it for today. You can download Ultramarine 39 using the link given in the description below. If you enjoyed our deep dive with Ultramarine Linux, definitely consider subscribing to the channel and leave me a big thumbs up. And if you're interested in leveling up your Linux skills, the link to my course Linux Mastery Express is given in the description below. It's designed to teach you Linux and take you from zero to hero within the shortest amount of time possible. You'll be using Linux like a pro within a matter of hours, so definitely check that out. Next up, check out this fantastic distro called LMDE. It's taking the Linux world by storm and it's unlike anything you have seen it. So absolutely don't miss that. Alright, this is Linux Techs signing out.